Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. All right, we are in our Christmas uh, theme here on the Daily Race. We are telling the story of Jesus, uh, his birth story. Uh, but we're, we're laying down the foundation for that because Matthew and, and Luke, who give us our birth narratives, don't start uh, with just the, the first announcement. They, they tell some, well, Matthew tell, starts with a lineage. Luke actually gives a lineage as well, but he actually gives it a little bit later. He gives it after kind of the, the birth narrative, but we're going we're gonna to plug it in here uh, because why does Luke does it from a little different perspective? So there's different audiences, right? So, so Matthew is communicating to a primarily Jewish audience, so he takes them back to Abraham. That's very important. Luke, though, Luke is a companion of the Apostle Paul. So Paul was primarily, uh, even though he was the, the most Jewish of the, the, the Jews, he was a Pharisee, he was a religious leader, he primarily, his ministry was to the Gentiles, to the non-Jewish people. So uh, this tie with Jesus to Abraham wasn't necessarily as important for um, non-Jewish people. Like they didn't, that didn't matter to them. So what does, uh, what does uh, Luke do here? He ties it all the way back to Adam. Why to Adam? Well, that the story of, of Adam and Eve and, and the curse and uh, showing that he is human, <laughs> that, that he is 100% man and 100% God. Uh, he also, along the way, ties it into the David family line, which even people that weren't Jewish probably were familiar with, the, you know, the story of, of King David. So he's doing a little bit different here. And, and instead of, of starting uh, with, with Abraham moving forward, uh, like Matthew does, he actually starts with Jesus and moves backwards. So it it's, takes place in uh, Luke chapter 3. And it says Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his public ministry. So uh, this is kind of after all the birth narrative, but Luke kind of drops us in there. He says, Jesus was known as the son of Joseph. Joseph was the son of Heli. And then it kind of goes all the way down through there. Uh, it keeps going, going all the way back to, to David. <laughs> the, the, uh, you got King David there. Nathan was the son of, of David. Uh, David was the son of Jesse. Jesse was the son of Obed. So that's, that's a little different. So um, it wasn't through David's family line. Uh, he's connected down through David, but through a different branch. So David's son, Nathan, is where Joseph's family line came out of. Uh, it was David's son, Solomon, where Mary's family line came out of, uh, to, connected to, to Jesus. So that's, that's really important to know that uh, you have that royal family line that's connecting to, to Jesus there, but it's through another branch here that, that, um, uh, that, that Luke takes us through. Now, the point is that he keeps going back, though. He doesn't stop at Abraham. He goes past Abraham all the way to, uh, to, to Adam. to Adam, And that's to, to bring it right back to how the first, the curse, right? The, the very curse that we read about at the very beginning, that one of Eve's descendants was going to bring about an end to sin. That, that he was going to defeat sin through one of Eve's descendants. That was the, the promise there. Um, and here we have Jesus brought all the way back to, to Eve, to Adam and Eve, one of Eve's descendants. Now that's, that's implied in, in Matthews, right? It's implied that everyone goes back to Adam and Eve. If you're a human being, you're, you're one of Eve's descendants, right? But Luke makes the explicit kind of connection back there to, to tie the story back into the story. That the Bible is one unfolding story of God's redemption plan. Yes, it's 66 books written over a couple, you know, 1,500 years. Uh, but they're all connected, all telling one story of redemption. Redemption that was necessary because of Adam and Eve's decision to, to break God's command, to live on like outside of God's boundaries. One, that every man, woman, and child has broken since then. No one's been perfect until Jesus shows up. And he's the one that's going to break that curse of, of sin. He's the one that's going to come and rescue mankind. And as we travel through this, this family line here, once again, it's, it's easy to kind of just gloss through this and, and uh, just not, you know, names or names, but, but why is this included? It's included to root Jesus in humanity. One of the biggest issues that, was that Paul, the Apostle Paul, was dealing with, that Luke was one of the companions with, was that Jesus wasn't really human, that he was just a spiritual being. He was just God. Uh, but 
which is why Luke takes all the time. He's like, no, no, he had a father, a father named Joseph. And Joseph was related to this person, this person, all the way back to Adam. He's, he's a human being through and through. And, and he's God through and through as evidenced by his miracles, as evidenced by his powers, as, as evidenced by the resurrection. <laughs> the resurrection was the proof that he was God and human. So that's why Luke includes the, uh, the genealogy the way that he does. That's why Matthew included it the way that he did. Because this account of God rescuing mankind is God coming out of heaven, giving up all of the glory, all of the honor to take on human flesh while still remaining God. 100% God, 100% human. Math doesn't add up. I get it. But the God is mysterious. This is the mystery of the gospel that, that Paul refers to very often. We don't have to know how it works. We can try, we can formulate, we can think about how atonement and redemption and all of these things work, but we're never going to fully get it. There's a mystery to it because God is more powerful than we are, and he's doing something far grander and more special than our minds can even comprehend. We just get the results of that. We get the results that through faith, we can have that forgiveness that Jesus Christ paid for on the cross because, because he was human, being able to to live that life sinless, perfect, be that sacrifice for mankind as a man, but rise from the dead, proving that he was God and have the power to forgive and defeat sin in the first place. All right, let's go ahead and pause there. Let's stop there for today. Let's go ahead and pray and get our day started. Lord, we love you. We love you and we just thank you for today. We thank you for your love and your mercy for us. God, we thank you for just another opportunity to live for you. And God, may we live today in response to the fact that you love us so much. May our actions, may our thoughts, may our conversations today uh, be honoring to you. God, may they build up other people. May they be encouraging to other people. May we live today as you lived here on this earth. God, we know we can't be perfect, but God, guide our steps. We want to represent you well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.